Beggars can't be choosers, but beggars never quit. Height here, and you already know what this is. It's time for choosing beggars. Let's do it. Our first one is from Spellenberry. It is still available, yes. I have my cats. How many? Three. Oh, I'm afraid three is a little much. An additional cat would be fine, but I'm not sure about three plus mine. It should be okay. Yes, I'm willing to take one extra cat, but that's it. You wouldn't allow three even for a bit? I'm in a situation and really need out. Well, what time frame are you looking for? Maybe like a month or so. I would write it into the agreement that the three cats are only allowed for one month, but if you really needed a month, we could also do that. Also, for three cats a month, I would ask for $120 a month extra instead of $50 a month extra. Yeah, I'm really struggling with money, so I don't know. It would be $770 for one month with three cats. It's a bit much. I have no income. My man would help me and he's struggling, so I can't ask him to pay that much. Aw, sorry to hear that. Yeah, so I don't know. I hope you can find a good place to stay. So you can't do a bit less? Sorry, Beggy. Not at this moment. Not even a bit. My cats are pretty good. I'm sorry, Beggy. That is my price. Well, you want over a hundred dollars more because of my cats, and they're pretty good, so... Yes, I do. I really hope you find a good place that has more room for your cats in your price range. I don't know why you can't do a bit less for the month, huh? Beggy, can you clarify what you are asking me, please? If you cannot charge that much for the month because of my cats! Ah, sorry Beggy, $770 for one month with three cats is my final price. Why? They're really good. $120 for cats is way too much. Most places are $25 per cat, so that's $75. Sorry Beggy, I hope you can find another place for the excellent price you mentioned above. My rate is as stated above. Everyone says that, so I don't know why you're asking for so much, especially cats that especially don't damage shit. Apologies again, Beggy. This is the price I'm asking. I understand if you're not able to afford it, and I very much hope you can find a good place that fits your financial needs. That's not okay. Sorry you feel that way, Beggy. It sounds like you found places that charge $25 per cat, so I hope you find something you're looking for in one of those houses. That's not okay, Red. I acknowledge your feelings and, again, hope that you find a place that is in your budget and meets your needs. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. Other people agree with me. That's ripping people off. Just saying. Okay, thanks for sharing your opinion. Not just mine, and especially when it's just a room that's ne- Okay, not. That's ripping people off big time. It seems like what Beggy just does not understand is the person they're asking to watch their cats also has cats of their own, as well as the fact that they're asking this person to provide them a service. So at the end of the day, this person has the right to charge whatever they feel is adequate for said service. This next one is by Atomic Blumpkin. Does anyone have a free boy dog that is potty trained and trained to sit and lay? That has a cage that they will give away also, and that'll be willing to drop off to me? I just shake my head whenever I see something like this because I already know if they ended up getting that animal, that animal would be heavily neglected. This next one is from McBeezy94. There are better bike shops out there, but these guys were closer to my apartment. I went in on 5-6-2023 and had a weird experience. At first I went in to get some CO2 cartridges. I specifically asked for 5 threaded ones. Didn't realize they gave me 3 threaded and 2 non-threaded until I got home. Annoying, but not the end of the world. So I went back and brought my girlfriend's tire with me that was having trouble seating. After I exchanged the CO2 cartridges, I asked if someone could take a look at the tire. Everyone was busy, so I tried to do it myself with their air compressor. 
After trying for a few minutes, some guy came over and asked if he could help, so I gave him the tire and he got it seated. As he was giving it back to me, he said, We usually don't do this for free, but we'll hook you up this time. Something I didn't really appreciate. He probably thought he was being funny, but it was a douchey comment. I've worked in bike shops before, and to keep customers coming back, you always do basic things for free. Wrap handlebars, seat a tire, change a cassette, install a water bottle cage, etc. are all things that should be done for free. With a smile on your face, I won't be back to this. They probably said they won't be back to this bike shop, and the irony is, is you don't perform services for free, because if businesses constantly handed out free services, well, they wouldn't have much of a business left. And I'm starting to think that this beggar no longer works in a bike store, because they thought it was okay to be giving away free services and ended up getting fired. I don't know. This next one is by Mythotica. User, is this still available? Yes, are you interested? Trade. Four. You're an Eagles fan? No. Do you like Babe Ruth? Hate sports. Sends pick. $300 motorcycle jacket. I don't ride. Sends pick. Laptop. No need. Good luck, dude. You're not gonna sell that piece of shit. Whenever I see a beggar offering things that they have to trade, I ask myself, why don't they try to sell these items to get the actual cash in hand and then go and try to get an item? It just doesn't make sense to me that they work so ass backwards. And our final one is from Alice in Hell. Help! Well, I have literally searched around the globe. Ireland, New Zealand, New York City, Amsterdam, and Brussels. Paris, Munich, and Edinburgh, too. No luck for me as of yet. I'm looking for a husband. He should be geeky, science-minded, awkward, and sensitive. His mind should sparkle more than his biceps, and his heart should be more prominent than his, hmm? He should be 5 foot 10 or taller, well-educated in science, sophisticated and confident, but no smooth talkers, please. He should be a bit worldly, having traveled and grown from every experience abroad. A man that is open to the future ahead and isn't so badly scorned that he's given up on the true meaningful beauty of love. Perhaps a scientist, engineer, or entrepreneur with a passion that drives him to make the world a better place. A man that can sip a glass of wine, not down a bottle of vodka, and talk about global politics, current events, and knows what is in the world beyond his own nose. He should enjoy cleaning with an immense passion, often encouraging me to cook creatively, splashing my creativity freely throughout the kitchen. He is healthy, but not a nut. He doesn't mind indulging in a bowl of ice cream once in a while, and he doesn't like laying on his yoga mat more than he likes laying on me. He may have children, grown or younger. He may have no children at all. What he does have is the ability, capacity, and compassion to love my children and grandchildren wholly and completely. This man will happily run out to buy tampons in the night and have no problem finding unflavored gelatin, coriander seed, or diet cherry 7-up in the grocery store. He will be mature in age, 50 to 65. He will love playing with my hair while we watch true crime shows, and he will happily dash off to France with me when I'm craving macarons or croissants. I don't care how he dresses, but he should be savvy enough to recognize when I've spent two weeks preparing and four hours getting dressed for a special event. Saying sorry will come easy, but only when he means it. Lastly, he will love me. He will love and adore me so much, he wants me to share his life, his family, and his name for the rest of our lives. If he has deep pockets, likes to snuggle, and enjoys roller coasters, that would be pretty cool too. I just thought I would check to see if anyone has one to trade. In exchange, I offer a giant, middle-aged heart, a hopeful spirit, a bizarre sense of humor, and a lifetime of happy memories to come. Let me know. Thanks, M.M. 
You know, I like how she waited until the very end to list that really what she's after is deep pockets, but if anybody paid attention to this entire post, the fact that she's talking about going on trips or just dashing off to France when she has a craving, it speaks that she wants a guy with money and she's not really after true love. But then again, what do you expect from a beggar? Alright, that's enough beggars for the day. Well, that wraps up this episode of Choosing Beggars. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.